You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Okay, we're live, but we got to let it breathe just for a moment. Got to bring on Facebook. Get the whole fam family under the, the roof here and we'll get this party started proper. And we are good. Welcome in, everybody, to the Huddle Up podcast presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle, powered by Blue Wire Pods. I'm your host, Chad Jensen, and with me is my fellow football priest. You know him. You love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, we had to cancel Kelberman's Corner earlier today because I had a uh, lot of family members that wanted to come visit, see the brand new baby. And, you know, these moments are once in a lifetime, right? So you kind of have to open the door mentioned something to that effect on Twitter. Appreciate everyone's concern. There is absolutely nothing wrong with our kid, with our new baby, Theodore. Theo's A-OK. We just had to juggle a bunch of family members from out of town and stuff cruising through. So everything's cool. Calverman's Corner will return next Sunday. Don't you worry. How was your weekend, though, bro? It was pretty good. I was, you know, um, I'm always looking forward to doing KK, but I'm happy it was nothing serious, Chad. And, you know, I understand you need more time with your baby, and I hope it was uh, spent well today. But, again, guys, anyone out there who was looking forward to it, we do apologize for the short notice announcement yesterday. I promise you a good episode is coming next Sunday. I'm, stick around for it. I can't wait to go over. You'll see what I'm talking about next Sunday. It's going to be the bomb, all right? Hot takes that hold water, so... Just hold your horses on that one week, and we'll get right back into the saddle. But, Zach, first things first tonight, got to shout out everybody in the chat, many of our OGs, Michaela, Dave, Dylan in the house helping us moderate the chat. Dylan, by the way, reach out, do this, get you back on the show. I want to get that booked sometime in the near <clears throat> near future. Uh, Garrett, what's up, dude? Nice to see you. Um, quick shout out here. Got to gotta flex out the people that, that answer the bell. Uh like this fella, Jonathan Egger, jumping in, sh- sending us his Let Him Hate t-shirt, the selfie. We'll get this up on <clears throat> Mile High Huddle Instagram. Make sure you guys are following MHH Instagram. Jonathan, excellent taste, my friend. Got to say, appreciate your support. And as always, man, I mean, you look – I mean, I'm sure you look great before you wore the shirt, but just like Superman, you don the, you don the gear, and all of a sudden you're a different animal, right? Shout out to you. Yeah, I hope you like the shirt. It looks good on you, Jonathan, for what it's worth. And as always, let him hate, baby. Let him hate. Now, we got a lot to get to relative to the quarterback position, Zach. Now, obviously, we're going to talk about some Teddy Bridgewater. We're going to talk – I have one observation I want to get to later on. Uh, we're going to talk about some Drew Locke. <clears throat> but the first thing I wanted to pick your brain on was the interesting decision by the Green Bay Packers team president, Mark Murphy, to <sighs> – invoke the name Aaron Rodgers in a mailbag. So this guy, credit to him, Mark Murphy, he has a regular column on the Green Bay Packers website where he'll either write on an issue or he'll answer questions in a fan mailbag. His most recent entry, Zach, he decided to address the Aaron Rodgers situation, even though there has been, according to head coach Matt LaFleur, nothing new on that front. They're waiting to see if he's going to show up Tuesday for OTAs. Doubt that he will. But let me just read to you quickly what team president Mark Murphy wrote on the site in response to a question from the fan base, quote, the situation we face with Aaron Rodgers has divided our fan base. The emails and letters that I have received reflect this fact. As I wrote here last month, we remain committed to resolving things with Aaron and want him to be our quarterback in 2021 and beyond. We are working to resolve the situation and realize That less both sides say publicly, the better. Close quote. Zach, so he's saying, let's stop talking about this publicly while talking about it publicly. How do you interpret this particular decision? Not so much what he said, but his decision to kind of kick the the hornet's nest further. Uh Well, this is how I interpret that first sentence, at least. The situation that Aaron Rodgers caused has divided our fan base. This is all public posturing. And the and the and I was going to say the Broncos, it's weird to talk about another team. The Packers can't let Rodgers have the last word because we've heard through the media now all these reports 
how he's disgruntled, how he's disenfranchised, how he's disenchanted, and all the different reasons as to why. He went on Kenny Mayne and had a well-publicized interview there. And the Packers, to their credit, either Matt LaFleur or Brian Gutekunst, whatever his name is, they've been pretty stoic. They've been pretty quiet about these Rodgers rumors, careful not to turn a little molehill into a mountain. But like you said, it's weird that you don't want it to be in the public domain, obviously. It's what you're saying here. But yet you're putting it as the team president responding to fan mail on the Packers' website. It's a little, I don't know, contradictory in a sense. But I see what he's saying here. It's more posturing. It's leverage. It's negotiation. The ball's in your court, Aaron. You have the last word. Look, if it was a guy, like let's say this was the owner's meeting or something and a mic got put in front of him and he gets asked the question, I understand why he would say maybe what he said here and then iterate as he closed, hey, the less both say uh, both sides say publicly, the better. But to say that is so ironic when you're the one here in this situation choosing to opine via fan mail, that means there's a reason and there's a rhyme to it. What he's trying to say here is it's another passive aggressive shot. This is me putting on my, you know, Freudian hat. Okay. But this is another passive aggressive shot to communicate to Aaron Rodgers. Hey dude, look at all the damage you're doing to us. I mean, look, the fans are divided, dude. We got fans eating their hearts out over here. Let's figure out how to make this thing work. You gotta be, if you're a Packers fan, you gotta be super, super concerned about this because Initially, when the, we heard the reports that the Packers had put a new offer in front of Aaron Rodgers about a, mm, two and a half, three weeks ago, it felt like, okay, that's the opening salvo to these two sides kind of figuring things out. But then he didn't take it. I can't imagine, Zach, the reason he didn't take it is because the number wasn't right. I got At this stage, I don't think it's just about money anymore. I really don't. I think Aaron Rodgers... Now you got pride on the line. You got so many other things. They might try to strong arm him into his bluff, you know, call his bluff on the whole. If if you don't trade me, I'm just not going to play thing. That's the way this is going because Packers publicly, Zach, continue to iterate and stick to their guns. We're not trading him. You know, Chad, I'm of the mind, I'm of the camp that it's mostly about money, may not be 100%, but I have a question for you. You talk about it being pride. How do you assuage that? How do you fix that if it's not money? A kiss on the lips? I mean, what do you do to make him feel better about his situation if not for his contract? It seems like, yeah, the Jordan Love selection, not being included on that, maybe not being the highest paid quarterback in the NFL coming off an MVP season. I just, If it's not about money, though, how else do you fix this if you're Green Bay? I'm asking you other than calling his bluff? Well, I think the biggest thing is it would be painful and it would set a tremendously bad precedent for the league owners. Fire your GM. I think that's the only thing they could do that at this stage that they haven't already tried that would ameliorate the issues here with Aaron Rodgers. And we know that that was part of what You know, we've heard rumors anyway that that was one of his demands, that he wants Brian Gutekunst, Gonzo. But again, you know, you look at some of the high-profile owners that really stir the pot in the NFL, like Jerry Jones and Robert Kraft up in New England. You know, I don't like – I don't want to use a a phrase that people end up misinterpreting, but it's like you don't want to let the players start deciding full – I mean, from from GM to personnel to whatever – It's one thing for a player, especially a marquee player, to be involved in like a coaching hire, to have a little bit of say or influence on a draft. I mean, even the Broncos gave Drew Locke some influence on last year's class. I mean, they called him before they decided to make the Albert O pick. That's not uncommon. But to say, I'm telling you, fire the GM. That's a, that's a, in my opinion, you're crossing a Rubicon. The bridge gets burned and there's no going back. And now you have a new precedent that gets set, Zach, the league over. But what's going to happen, though, let's say the Packers do fire their GM. Is Rodgers going to be the GM? I mean, the next person isn't going to come into that position, and they're going to make some calls on the team as well. And is he going to be having to meddle in every single uh, decision the new GM makes? Is it personal with Gutenkunst? Is it just a power grab? 
I mean, I look at this as a point of diminishing returns when it comes to someone like Aaron Rodgers, that, yeah, he's an MVP. Yeah, he's a future Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's a, a title winner. He's also 38 and causing, like Mark Murphy said, this much dissension, this much division, and this much acrimony in a proud franchise coming off again a very successful season. So I pose the question, if he's doing this now, he's not satisfied making $240 million in his career, winning MVP, and the, un- the understudy quarterback not getting a single snap last year, who's to say he won't do this in Denver or wherever, wherever else he ends up? Who's to say he wouldn't force the next GM out? And the Packers, I'm sorry, as good as he is and as, as important as he is to the fabric of that franchise, they cannot set that precedent by firing their general manager because he wants it. It did kind of startle me, though, to see Mark Murphy continue to just stir the pot. Like, if you really want to encourage – Aaron Rodgers to come back to the table, additional passive aggressive politics in the court of public opinion. I mean, you want the zeitgeist to calm down a little bit, right? That that you want things to die down and you just kind of stirred them back up. Now, maybe that was the strategy, Zach. Maybe they're trying to confront the issue or force Rodgers to confront the issue, but it just seemed like a very questionable tactic, especially the irony of him saying the less we say publicly about this, the two sides, the better, but we'll, we'll continue to talk about this uh, real quick. Shout out to Tanner who jumped in to, to uh, fire off an extremely generous super chat before he, uh, before the show even started. And we know he's not with us right this second, but he'll be watching afterwards. Like he does. He's a dedicated member of our community and a bona fide mile high huddle, super chat, superstar. Love you, Tanner. Appreciate you, dog. He says, just showing uh, my love, I'm at work, but I'll be catching the show afterwards. Broncos for life. Hashtag state of being. My high salute, Tanner. Tanner, you are the man. Thank you so much for your support. And we see you each and every show lending your uh, influence on this podcast. We appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, real quick, too. One last, and then we'll get to some matters of business and then dive back into the chat. Shout out to Mo in the house. Hope everything's going good with baby Malik. It's really cool that both yourself, Mo, and and uh, me, we have two sons. They're only a couple of weeks apart. It's going to be fun to see kind of how they grow and all that stuff. But hope you're doing well. Hope Malik's doing well. Appreciate your support as always, my friend. Let's dive into something I know everyone is just keen, keen, keen to get to, and that is matters of business. All right, guys, real quick. I'll keep it short and sweet. Make sure you're connected with us on social media, starting with Twitter, at HuddleUpPod. And at Mile High Huddle, those are the two accounts that you, no matter what, got to make sure you are following. Uh, and then while you're at it, follow our producer. He's a sweetheart, but he's also a beast. All right. At John K. MHH on Twitter. My partner here is at Kelberman on Twitter, at Kelberman NFL, myself, at Chad and Jensen. And then also head on over to Facebook and follow the Huddle Up Podcast Facebook page. Navigate facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle Pod or just open up the app on your phone, search Huddle Up Podcast, like the page. We, each and every week, continue to grow that page. If you're both liking and following the page, you are automatically in the running every single week for our swag giveaways. Gave one away Thursday night, a t-shirt. We're going to give another one away this week to a randomly selected person who's liking and following the page. It's just a small thing we can do to uh, thank our fans and thank our community, while also incentivizing you guys to help us grow the page, because We have some huge plans for the Huddle Up Podcast Facebook page, but we have to kind of hold off on them until it gets to a certain level. There's some reasons, media reasons, that would bore you for me to explain that, but we need you guys to get that done, help us out. And then also, guys, we had to uh, skip Kelberman's Corner this week, but we did not skip the Trickle Zone for our super supporters on Facebook. If you would like to get access to our VIP premium video and podcasting content, Go to facebook.com slash mile high huddle. That's the main mile high huddle page. You'll see the big blue button at the top it says become a supporter. Click that. It's five bucks a month supporting the cause, helping keep the lights on at MHH. Plus you get access to this content and direct access to us, to our entire staff as well. So head on over there, take care of that business. And then also the merch store guys, huddleuppod.com. Get your swag on, get a hat, get a tee. You know what, Zach? Speaking of t-shirts, I think it's a, there's a little something we should we should point everyone's attention to, a little design uh, that's fresh on the on the merch store. All right, get your brand new football priest T-shirt. All right, I'll try and blow this up. Let me see if I can blow it up. If it's gonna let me, hold on. 
Here's uh, the newest design. It's a little pixelated because I've had, whoop, because I've had to, that's not going to work. Hold on. I don't know how to do that. Let me just do this. You guys can see this. Oh, geez. Good enough. All right. T-shirt, football priest, cartoon, yours truly, my partner, Zach Kelberman. Go check it out. We'll put the link right here uh, in the description or in the, the chat, the comments. Go check it out. We got that. We got a bunch of new designs coming down the pike, including a beast and the priest and the beast T-shirt that's coming. Appreciate your guys' support. It's another way to help us out, what we're doing here at MHH. And we are dedicating more and more uh, of the revenue these shows generate to creating better and better designs for you guys. But, guys, if you're not in a position to do those things, hey, it's all good. We're just stoked to have you with us. Just make sure you're subscribed, all right, key. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you've clicked the bell so that you're notified every time we go live. And then also, guys, if you're on YouTube and Facebook, we would consider it to be the highest kindness if you would like the video. All right. Even if you're only enjoying one or two minutes, hop in, hop out, come back to it, whatever. Give this particular episode a like because that helps to get this content with the robots. All right. In front of other Broncos fans who aren't aware of this community is out here waiting to embrace them. And then the litmus test is number three. If you think we're doing a good job or at least you respect the effort, then share this video out there and help us continue to grow. Reach those new like minded Broncos fans just like you. All right, Zach, let's uh, catch up on a few of our very, very patient uh, Super Chat superstars like George, who's been uh, biding his time. Shout out to you, buddy. Fist bump right back to you. Appreciate your support. Zach, I'm trying to think here. I don't have the greatest memory, but going through the Rolodex in my mind, I can't think of the last live Huddle Up podcast where George (laughs) Newton was not only in the chat, but not providing a Super Chat. So shout out to you, George. Yeah, he's on a lot of the pods as well, from what I see on MHH. So we appreciate the support. I, you know, universally site wide. Thank you, George. Love you, buddy. Uh, the brainstorm. Appreciate you, my friend. He says a question: Who do you think will get double teamed more, Von Miller or mm. Bradley Chubb, Zach? That's a really, really good question. Um, you know, I, I think. The, the guy who played last year and played pretty well is Bradley Chubb. Even though he's coming off that ankle, once he gets healthy from that, he's going to be the Bradley Chubb of old, Bradley Chubb of 2018, hopefully, and better. So I think maybe initially he'll draw the doubles, but you have Von Miller on the other side. And even though he didn't play last year and people are counting him out and discounting Von Miller, he'll never be the same, he's still Von. And even Von at 50 60 70% is better than a lot of people around the NFL. So initially I think 55 will get double more but as the season goes on and Vaughn hopefully stays healthy and gets back to that level they're both going to draw those doubles which should free up more single teams for Draymond Jones for Shelby Harris and for a blitzing linebacker uh inside linebacker so I think both by the end of the year they both look Bradley Chubb by virtue of his draft pedigree alone created a little bit of a profile in the NFL then he went out as a rookie produced a season that not even a dozen other players in NFL history had done in terms of the 12 sacks as a rookie. I mean, 10 people, you can count it on two hands, the number of defensive players that have accomplished that feat. Didn't get a Pro Bowl, didn't even earn Defensive Rookie of the Year, but hey, he popped onto the map and then he kind of faded out because of the ACL the next year. I wouldn't quite say stormed back in year three, but steadily just kept chipping away really got his game legs under him from about week four on and earned a Pro Bowl nod. But it was, Zach, one of the – I don't know how to describe it. One of the most soft Pro Bowl elections I've seen in terms of – like it wasn't an authoritative, well, yeah, of course, hello. It's Yeah, this guy's a Pro Bowler. It was a little bit of a surprise to everybody, including Bradley, that he earned that all-star nod, but he did earn it. So he's a guy that – Offensive coordinators, when they're game planning and they're scheming week to week, Vaughn, Chubb, they're almost, not quite, almost equally being viewed as threats on the edge. But if push comes to shove, guys, who is the name that we already can say is going to be etched in the Hall of Fame? Vaughn Miller. And look, we won't know until we see him on the field again for sure. And I mean on the field going against outside opponents. But until he proves on the field that he's not the Vaughn of old, Got to assume he's going to be the guy that gets the majority of those double teams. 
Yeah, and Tim right here, thanks for pulling that up, John. That's how I exactly how I feel. I don't really care who's double. I don't really care how the stack totals work out. I just want a full year of Von Miller and Bradley Chubb playing opposite each other and causing that havoc in a Fangio defense as they envisioned a couple years ago. And I saw a comment by Nathan in the side here. Chubb will never be on Von's level. You know, Von's so much better. That might be the case, but we should all be hoping that Bradley Chubb reaches his level because that would mean the Broncos are better. He is the future at outside linebacker, Bradley Chubb, and you should hope that he develops to get to that point. I think that's what the Broncos want <clears throat> going into this season. <coughs> Excuse me, most most definitely. Um, Poppy jumping in, very, very generous. Super. Thank, you. Thank you, Poppy. I mean, almost, I don't know if it's every day, that every pod this week, but I know you've been very, very active and supporting us supporting Mile High Insiders, Broncos for Breakfast. Really appreciate you building the Broncos. You know how much the Princess of MHH means to us. So shout out to you. Thank you so much. Hope things are trending in the right direction for you and your family. She says, hi, MHH family. Hope you all are having a great night. I'm at work. I'll catch you guys later. Shout out to Poppy. Yeah, Poppy is the greatest, and we appreciate all your support. We hope everything is going well in your personal life, Poppy. And I believe you were very supportive on the DVDD 100th episode, by the way. Anyone's listening out there, congrats on that, guys. Big milestone. But, Poppy, you are the greatest. Thank you. All right, John, I do have Edward. Let me grab him here. Uh, good to see you, buddy. Edward Keating, um, one of the more prolific posters in the MHH Superfans Facebook group. Likes to go live, likes to share his thoughts, kind of like we do. So love seeing that, Edward. And I really do appreciate, too, you're keeping it on the PG-13 language-wise. Good job, buddy. Appreciate your support, as always. He says, Rodgers is not coming to Denver. Locke is our QB. Teddy won't beat him out, and Locke will ball this year. Screenshot this. John, make sure you screenshot this, okay? Hashtag Locke2021. Let him hate. Denver Rockets for life. Stay to be. Hey, I've... Share that opinion on all three of those points you make there. Zach, there's one thing that's kind of nagging at me, though. Have you – I went back through Denver Broncos social media this weekend. I'm looking at all the little clips and cut-ups they've shown so far of 7-on-7. Every single clip, and there were three if not four, all right, where they've shown some cut-ups, the first quarterback shown to make a pass every time, Teddy Bridgewater. Do we read into that, or is that a coinkadink, being that we're not big believers in the the C word? The Broncos aren't stupid. At least their social media people aren't. They know that Teddy or Drew Locke is reviled in the Broncos fan base. He's not going to get those likes. He's not going to get the retweets. He's not going to get the clout on Twitter, unfortunately, right now, that Teddy Bridgewater would get. And he's the new quarterback. He's the shiny new toy, and he plays quarterback. He's Teddy Two Gloves. He has this reputation for whatever reason around the NFL. And I think the Broncos... Again, their PR team, their social team, they're trying to enhance and build that excitement, whatever it is with Teddy Bridgewater. But, you know, we got to play it fair. They showed an interception, and they kind of blocked out Locke from that. So it's looking like they're kind of going out of their way a little bit to frame the quarterback competition in the way that's the most social media friendly, I should say. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure that's a big part of it is they're trying to kind of introduce Teddy in the best way possible to the fan base and get people excited for him. Even if he doesn't end up winning the job, I'm sure that's a big part of it, but it makes me question a little bit. My premise, you know, my gut feeling that this is Drew Locke's job to lose. Maybe it's not. I'm I'm open to the idea of, as always that I'm wrong. All right. Maybe the Broncos it's, it's inverted. Maybe this is Teddy's job to lose, but I tend to believe based on what we've seen empirically from comments made by coaches to even Teddy himself and just reading the tea leaves, Zach, that Teddy was brought in primarily, yeah, fail safe, sure, to push Locke, to really kind of help hone Locke and, you know, see if this thing is going to work by virtue of competition. I don't ever remember anybody in the Broncos front office saying, yeah, we wanted to bring in Teddy, a proven bona fide starter to take over and show Drew Locke the ropes. That's not really how it was postured. It was postured to push Locke and even Teddy himself at least one time. It's only been twice, I think, that he's been on the record as a Bronco. One was a little uh, DenverBroncos.com side interview in a hallway, and the other one, of course, is podium. But 
it's worth kind of keeping an eye on as you see these clips unfold. Is it going to continue to be Teddy, the first quarterback shown? Because think about it. When Peyton was the cue here, let's not use Peyton. Let's say even Trevor Simeon, all right? Try and think back. All those clips. Trevor Simeon was usually the first guy shown throwing because he was the presumptive starter. So my wheels are spinning a little bit on this. Yeah, I just, you know, it's going to be a fair competition. I don't think Rodgers is coming to Denver, my opinion. I don't know how many more times I can even say those words. But it's going to be a fair competition. Right now it's an open competition, and it should be Locke's job. And right now I think if you formed a depth chart, he'd be quarterback one. But I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not going to lie to you and say there's no chance at all Teddy Bridgewater won't win this battle. If Locke doesn't perform up to snuff, he's going to lose. The thing is, though, you mentioned Bridgewater coming in to push Locke. I think it's already succeeded in that aspect. You've seen a different Drew Locke, at least we have on the practice field. Through videos, his stance, his posture, his attitude toward the media, he's pissed off, he's motivated. It's a different Drew. It's an adult Drew, not a baby Drew like we saw the first couple years. So if that's because of Bridgewater's influence, I'm all for it. Shout out to Denise. Shout out to – let me uh, just quickly flash some props here to our superstar supporters on Facebook. Denise, what's up? Gary Leeds Palmer, legend. What is this, week 19 in a row, the streak you're on, my friend? Jeremy Kusich, good to see you, buddy. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for the stars on Facebook. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's kind of Facebook's version, <clears throat> excuse me, of a, of a super chat. So it's all support. It's all love. It all helps keeping the lights on for our podcast. So thank you. And Alan, welcome, buddy. All right, let me see here. Uh, Christian, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Appreciate you being with us. Never got to congratulate you on your new son, he says. So congrats. Hey, appreciate that. Really do. uh, Hey, means a lot, my friend. And we look forward to having you on the show soon. Um, We got one here from Bushido on YouTube. Theodore, we know who Chad is rooting for in the QB battle. LOL. Grats. Not true. Not true. A, B, we don't call him Teddy. We're not calling Theodore, our our new baby, uh, Teddy. His his nickname or his whatever. It's Theo. That's what we're calling him. But who knows? Maybe that will grow and become a thing as he gets older, the whole Teddy. Because nicknames, you can't really – I mean, you can try to plan them, but the best nicknames are organic and spontaneous and they're created. No one's planning on calling this kid Teddy for now. So we'll see. Thank you, Danny, for the stars on Facebook. Appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Um, oh, I was BG. just going to grab one from uh, Black Knight, the but the stream jumped on on Twitch. BG, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Thank you for the very generous super chat. He says, I finally got a new phone and can watch again. We've been wondering about you. We've been wondering where you've been, my dog. By the way, while you've been gone, somebody took your place as the king. You and, and Dale – shared the record for the biggest super chat on the show of all time. That has now been usurped black Knight, He got you beat, not this last week, but the week before. So just FYI, uh, it's good to see you, Jeremy. Appreciate you being here uh, real quick, Zach. Here's a, here's a question from Albert Knoppers, one of our great supporters um, and a good friend. He says, what if the Broncos are scheming a two quarterback game style where both play at different plays. Zach, would you like to see that? And how realistic is that? A two quarterback system? I, Albert, I love you, man, but this isn't college. It's not going to work. Especially, can you imagine a P- Pat Shermer running a two quarterback system? Sean Payton can barely do it in New Orleans. You want Pat Shermer to do it, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater? No, it's going to be one or the other. And I hope whoever is the quarterback gets the lion's share of the first team reps because. Being a, a a Tebow on this offense or a Taysom Hill on this offense is not going to cut it. They have enough weapons. Let's focus on getting K.J. Hamler a screen pass before we run a two-quarterback system. John, do you have Ghost Slayer? We need Ghost Slayer if you got him. Um, meanwhile, <clears throat> while you're getting that queued up. Oh, there he is. Okay, great. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Ghost Slayer, what's up, dude? A newer name I don't recognize on Super Chat, so welcome and thank you. Ghost Slayer says, hey, Chad and Zach, my brother Chris just graduated. He has autism, and you guys are an inspiration to him. Hashtag go Broncos. Chris, if you're listening to this, let me tell you something. It was a monumental, monumental achievement to get my son, who just graduated high school, to graduate high school. So anyone who graduates high school and it's autism like that, dude, you are the man. Congrats to you. What an accomplishment. What a nice milestone to have on your resume as a young man. 
props, congrats. You go, dude. Especially nowadays, it's not easy with the pan. We're coming out of the pandemic now. I mean, school's all crazy. That's such a cool accomplishment, Chris. Congratulations. And you have a great brother who's very supportive of you. Thank you for watching tonight. Listen, from my son to a nephew and kids I've talked to, I mean, all my kids, honestly, the whole online school thing, it has seen like my 13-year-old, soon to be 13-year-old, he's been our A student. Of all our kids, he's been our like set and forget he goes to school, gets the work, does the work, A's every single grade, every single class, every single subject, whatever. This last school year was much harder for him because of the online component. So anyone who can persevere through that, I think there's some people out there who it's, you know, it kind of fits them. But for the most part, the vast majority of people, it's an additional obstacle to overcome to graduate high school. If you're doing so much of it on the internet, there's just something about Zach, I think it comes down to kind of like people who work from home and stuff like, you know, if you're at home and there's no one looking over your shoulder and, you know, even if you know you got work to do for a lot of people, it's a lot easier to say, why do today what I can always do tomorrow? Right. No one's no one's watching. And then they, you know, kind of get, oh, all of a sudden, you know, we're in the final stretch. I got all this homework is piled up. I got to go into freaking, you know, throw down mode and catch up. So anyway, congrats to you, dude. That's really cool, Chris. Yeah, someone who works from home. It's great not having to wear pants when you go to work, but you're your own boss. That's not always a good thing sometimes. I mean, I know I fall behind. I get, you know, a little lazy. I get complacent, and uh, I was better learning. I wasn't a school. You know, people are either school people or not school people, but I would definitely be better in school than be online and be virtual. So, again, Chris, major congrats. That's awesome, and we're so happy for you. Andrew Switzer jumping in on Super Chat, another newer name. Appreciate you, Andrew. Welcome. And he, too, is a newly graduated high schooler. He says, I just graduated from high school. I'm not able to watch today's show because of that, but go Broncos. Andrew, again, same same principle as with Chris and my son, Ethan. Congrats to you for congr- or, or for graduating high school. It's a seriously, it's it's a serious accomplishment, especially those of you who are the class of 2021 that had to endure that weird school year, this last year you had. So that was no mean feat. Congrats to you. Yes. Congrats, Andrew. Michaela, the Duchess in the house. We've had the princess. We've got the Duchess. All right. Court is in session. Not that kind of court. We're talking about MHH royalty. All right. What's up, Michaela? Appreciate you, my friend. She says, personally, I think the relationship between Rodgers and Green Bay is too far gone downhill. There's nothing the Packers can do. Firing a GM because a player wants him gone would open a Pandora's box. I agree. But I think it's the only guarantee the Packers have. Like if Mark Murphy really wants to just not worry about this anymore and get his future Hall of Fame quarterback back in the building, Zach, I think that's the only way to grease those wheels. I don't think anything's too far gone in the NFL. I don't think really anything's irreparable, especially when money's involved. And you can argue whether it's 100% about the money, but I believe it's a major component here because it's all about assuaging his ego, assuaging his pride, and I think – When Mahomes got that contract and compounded by the love selection, I think it's stuck in Aaron Rodgers' craw. I mean, he can get that way sometimes. I think it will get fixed in Green Bay, and that's where I think we'll end up playing this coming season. All right. Let me see real quick. I'm going to grab – shout out, Gary. Uh, Also, Jason O'Neill. What's up, buddy? He says, been a minute since I've been able to tune in live. Hope all of Broncos country is alive and well. And congrats to Chad and his wife with the new bundle of joy. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Um. All right, I'm just scrolling here. I want to try and get to as many of our great community members and questions and comments as we possibly can tonight. Uh, Christian, what's up, dude? Good to see you. He says, what's up, Priest? Turned 23 today. A lot of notable um, achievements and accomplishments and, you know, anniversaries and birthdays. This is rad. Christian, 23. That's cool, man. He says, eating with the fam. We'll catch you guys after dinner. Hashtag state of being. Let them hate. Happy birthday, Christian. I hope you have a great one, buddy. Hope it's a good dinner, too. Thank you. Um, real quick, Todd Ostendorf. What's up, Todd? Great having you with us, as always. You bring good comments and questions and topics and discussion to this chat here. So appreciate you being with us. He says, Von Miller was just posturing for more money, but I think Rogers is genuinely unhappy in Green Bay. Bottom line, we're stuck with or fortunate to have Locke and Bridgewater for better or for worse. I do agree with that last sentiment in particular, Zach. For better or for worse, Broncos fans 
it's going to be Drew or it's going to be Teddy, <clears throat> Teddy this year. And whoever it is, all we can do is support that quarterback. And at least, you know, we don't support the lengthy open competition, but the best man should win and the best man should be the Broncos quarterback this year. And we think no matter who it is, they have a chance to really make some noise this coming season. John, I'm grabbing Jeremy, and then I'm grabbing Joe, and I'm grabbing KB82. What's up? Kenneth Booker in the house. I believe it's K. I think, yeah, that's K- Kenneth Booker. Uh, and then we'll grab another super chat. But Jeremy, one of our super supporters on Facebook, he says, what's up, fellas? Who's going to be the rookie surprise this year? So I think we got to kind of remove Sertan, maybe even Javante from that. But we don't necessarily have to. What would your answer be? Dark horse, Jamar Johnson. It's easy to say, Baron Browning. Jamar Johnson, once he learns the playbook a little bit, and I think he'll pass uh, Stearns on the depth chart, he's going to be everything the Broncos thought that Will Parks could be, and then some. He is the safety of the future, natural playmaker. I literally cannot wait to see him play with Simmons and that secondary with those pass rushers, with the entire defense. That is my uh, number one rookie surprise on defense is Jamar Johnson. I think that's a good option. I'm going to go ahead and say Quinn Miners. I think, you know, it's not a flashy thing, right? Offensive line, no one's really writing home about the the, the gut, you know. But still, I think he's going to give Lloyd Cushenberry a run for his money at center. And I think there's a good chance he wins the job. Just because from what we've picked up, as reliable as Cushenberry was last year, showed up every game, started all 16 as a rookie, that – Talk about accomplishments. That's an accomplishment. He wasn't the bully. He wasn't the physical presence at the point of attack Mike Munchak hoped for and expected and demands of his guys in the trenches, whereas Quinn Miners, I mean, that's his calling card. He's a beast. He's going to put you on your skates. He's going to put you in the dirt. You know, he's going to look for work, and they want him at center. When they when they uh, drafted him, I, I mean, I went back, did my research on the guys. You guys know we, Zach and I, we're not, we don't pride ourselves on being uh, perfect draft Nick experts with the class. But I went back and did my due diligence. I'm like, okay, guard, right? This guy's going to be a guard. No, they want him at center. Now, if he doesn't win the job, you know, he's a swing guy that can go center or either side as far as the guard's concerned. But I'm going to say Quinn Miners. Maybe I'm a bigger Cushionberry fan than most, but I would rather the Broncos put the best five on the field. So whether it's minors at center or guard, left guard, right guard, I want the best five. I hope they're not giving up on Cushenberry too soon. I know he has some strength concerns. I know he was kind of spotty last year, but the foundation is there, I think, for a long-term center. And we've seen the turnover chat, Connor McGovern, Matt Paradis. The Broncos don't seem to want to nail down one center. They want a revolving door. Hopefully, if it's minors, that ends now. Indeed. All right. Here's one from Joe on YouTube. He says, is training camp open to the public? It would be great to see Drew and Teddy side by side. We don't know yet is the answer. The Broncos have not made a decision, at least a public one quite yet. My expectation is that they will because they're going to want to get fans as much back into the groove just for the pure sake, Zach, of the bottom line. Even though they don't make money per se on fans showing up to training camp, they do on the excitement that generates and the butts that's going to put in the seats come football season. So just with the way this whole thing has really finally opened up and people are getting back to, to live in life and whatnot, I'd be stunned if fans aren't allowed at training camp this year. Yeah, I would be really surprised if it's not even mostly full attendance, if not full attendance. There might be some distancing or other precautions in place, but I would wager right now training camp will be open to the public. KB, what's up, bro? You got to check out his latest article on Draymond Jones, guys. Go to milehighhuddle.com, find that piece. Very nice work. Who do you think will end up with the most interceptions? Kyle Fuller, Bryce Callahan, Justin Simmons, or someone else? Zach, to me, it's Justin Simmons. Each year he's Mm. been in the league, he's bested his previous PB and interceptions. Last year was no exception as he made the Pro Bowl the year prior. No exception as he made the All-Pro team. I think he he ends up leading the team once again in picks this year. And if it ends up being a corner and I'm wrong, I'm going to go ahead and put my money on Kyle Fuller. 
I was going to say, for the sake of conversation, I'm taking Kyle Fuller. If he ever shows up to the team, if he ever wants <laughs> yeah. to come to Dove Valley, uh, that'd be nice. But, yeah, I think the pressure of the Broncos' front seven combined with the secondary members like Simmons and like Ronald Darby, it's going to allow Kyle Fuller, whether outside or on the slot, to become a ball hawk. I can see three, four, or five picks this year from Kyle Fuller. Dale, what's up, dude? Good to see you. And we're looking forward to talking with you later this week. Right, Wednesday night is the debut of Dale on the podcast superstar segment this week. It's going to be a guest. He says, "I got my MHH Priest hat and hoodie. Haven't been able to find previous episodes of KK on Facebook though. This is the best Broncos pod. Love MHH, the Priest, and John. Appreciate that, my friend. Really do. Um, tell you what, John. Try and remind me at the end of this show before we sign off." I'll go through and show you guys how to do it. It'll take 15 seconds. Dale, I'll show you exactly how to do it, buddy. So thank you for the support, as always. Uh, also, EDJ, what's up, dude? Good to have you in the house. Appreciate the kind words and support. You to man. Uh, Dale Hendricks, also jumping in with the super chat. Thank you, Dale. Uh, if you're on Twitter, make sure you reach out to us, all right? Uh, he says, uh, hey, Broncos country from sunny Palm Springs. By the way, Palm Springs does have a Bronco connection. All right. That's uh, John Elway spent a lot of time in Palm Springs. That's where his mother lived for a long time after his father died. And uh, I know the Elway family, you know, they spent a lot of time there. So anyway, unlike any other NFL team, the fans are the owners talking about Green Bay, stay in Green Bay, hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Zach, maybe that, ha- that maybe that could play a part, right? I know there's the fan owned component to this, but I, I want to say there's like a board of trustees that, that are involved yep. in, hiring, you know, personnel department, this and that. But at the end of the day, if you ask those, this board of trustees, push comes to shove and they say, Do you, are we starting the Jordan Love era officially or are we keeping Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay until he hangs up his cleats? I can't imagine the board of trustees are going to probably find too much wrong with the notion of going ahead and saying, ha, you know, adios, Gute Kunst, we're going to kind of roll with Rodgers. But again, bad precedent. They would get a lot of negative pressure from other NFL owners and the league front office to do that, I would imagine. So I would be stunned if such a thing ultimately shakes out. I don't think Green Bay should acquiesce and fire the GM, but I I also don't know exactly how the ownership works, how much say the fan base has, or whether the GM like Uta Kunst or or Mark Murphy has final say and and the ultimate power there. So um, I would wager to believe most, most of the fan base, if not all of the fan base, wants the MVP, future Hall of Famer, to finish his career in Green Bay. Kane, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Descendant of Billy the Kid in the house. Howdy, fellas. Uh, I'll, I can't stay long, uh, but I'll be back. Cool, man. Hey, thanks for checking in. Thanks for supporting us in the brief moment that you were with us and hope uh, you check out the rest of the show. Appreciate you, Ken. Uh, let me see here, guys. I want to try and uh, – Clay, he's a big believer in Drew. Hope he pops off this year. I'm loving the pod. We're filling it. We're feeling it that Drew's going to turn the ship around. All right. This is it. Pobby jumping in. Appreciate you, Pobby. Um, Mike, I'm curious what you are meaning about this. He says, Phil Milani, who does a lot of the video host stuff for uh, DenverBroncos.com, went off at the media having locked derangement syndrome on his podcast. Really? Shoot us the link. Put the link in the chat. John will keep an eye out. Bonner will keep an eye out. I'd like to hear this myself. But it's undeniable, Zach. I mean, it has infected not just the national perspective, but so many of our colleagues in media, they can't find word one good to say about Drew Locke, even when he does things that, you know, are praiseworthy. You know, it's like, come on, man, this is getting out of control. R.I.P. Phil Milani's mentions on Twitter. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yes, EDJ, I do remember your drawings. I do remember your drawings. There are some things that go ahead, Zach. I have a bone to pick EDJ. That's the second time I saw Z-A-K-C. Is that like an (laughs) insult? And then are you calling me a chief supporter? What's going on here? But yes, uh, we can't always use the stuff that fans send in, but, uh, but yeah, dude, if you have designs, keep sending them in. We'll always take a look at it. We'll always take a look at it. Uh, slide and glide. Appreciate you being with us. All right. It doesn't comment much, but listens to every pod every single night. Appreciate that. Uh, Michael says, Drew Locke is my cue. He will ball out this year. 
Broncos defense is going to be scary for quarterbacks to play against. Chad and Zach are awesome. Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, the component here for Drew, the reason why I think fans should, even those that are not necessarily Drew Locke derangement syndrome, and there is a distinction, guys. We want to make one thing very clear. I've had to do this on several occasions outside the pod on DMs and people reaching out saying, hey, I don't think it's fair you paint us with this Locke derangement syndrome brush. Too broad a strokes, too broad a strokes. Guys, there's a distinction. It's one thing to say, like, put yourself in the posture of being a Broncos fan circa 2018. You're down on Paxton Lynch. He cried on the bench at the Raiders. Very disappointing. You're still holding out some hope, maybe, that he turns the ship around. But you're not actively castigating this dude. You're not, like, hoping and campaigning for his demise. That's the difference. Zach, it's one thing to be critical of Drew Locke and say, hey, look, XYZ wasn't good enough, but because of you know A and B, we're holding out hope that he can be, but we're not actively rooting for his demise. If you're actively rooting against Drew Locke, that's where you fall into the Locke derangement syndrome demographic. It, because we're the first to admit his shortcomings from last year. I mean, his the turnovers, his... Uh, his accuracy, his technique, his his whole uh, mental aspect of quarterbacking the team, we called into question. So we've been fair with our lock analysis. We just feel like he should get another shot, and we're predicting he will get another shot. And to our credit, I hate to pat ourselves on the back here, we haven't deviated from that since the end of last season. I yes. just had an idea. Sorry, sorry. Go on. Continue. Forget it. Forget I did this. Go on. All I was going to say was, you know, throughout the Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, every quarterback that's become available, we've been uh, steadfast in our belief that Locke will get another shot. And if he's if he flops, we'll be the first to admit it. So it's okay to not like him, but at least be fair and objective in your analysis. Don't be pro football focused. Real quick, Chris, don't worry. We're coming right back to you, buddy. Michaela just gave me a great idea for a T-shirt. Great idea. Something about – inoculation prevent you from getting locked arrangements and something floating in the back of my mind. Okay. Um, there's certain words I don't want to use because this show will get muted. Um, but a certain V word that I want to use relative to locked arrangement syndrome, look for that. It's coming down the pike. Uh, Chris, what up, dude? Good to see you. Appreciate you. Uh, connect on Twitter. Welcome. He says, I don't like that. Teddy has to wear gloves because of his small hands and can't rip it and zip it. Go, Drew, and show him how to sling the ball around. Yeah, Drew, you know, I mean, Jerry Judy and K.J. Hamler both opined on the difference in terms of what kind of ball comes out of the right hand of Drew Locke and what comes out of Teddy. But, hey, guys, I know it's a highlight reel, so buyer beware. But, Zach, go watch some of those clips and the cut-ups of Teddy throwing it at UC Health Training Center. He's not a guy that has plus arm strength, but he's got – good enough arm strength like this isn't a limp arm dude by any stretch the fact that he can anticipate and throw into the future and use that touch and accuracy that's his calling card as a passer zach but guys make no mistake this dude it doesn't have a noodle attached to his right shoulder he can he can hang but drew Locke is a quarterback that has plus arm strength is it josh allen no is it aaron Rodgers? maybe not is it Patrick Mahomes, not as far as arm strength, pretty close. Obviously, Patrick hasn't beat in a lot of the other key areas, but Drew Locke has really strong arm. But don't sell Teddy too short, Chris. But love you, buddy. Yeah, Teddy has he, he throws a very catchable pass, and that's an asset as well in the NFL. I, I just to tack on to your point. Uh, there is no questioning or no debating the difference in arm talent between Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. One throws more of a hard dagger dart type pass. The other one's more of a floater. So it's more like, you know, pick your poison, whatever flavor of ice cream you want. The Broncos receivers can work well with both, whether it's chocolate or vanilla or strawberry. It's still ice cream. You're still going to eat it and you're still going to have a blast doing it. Right. Um, Real quick here. Shout out to, let me pull this up. We've had a, a uh, just a great outpouring on Facebook. Hold hold that thought, Eric. Just one second, um, John. I just want to shout out real quick. Poppy jumping in on YouTube, jumping in on Facebook. Gary again. Randy, what up, dude? Thank you, Denise. Love you, Elena and Joel. What's up? Thank you. And then of course Jeremy as well. Shout out to our superstar senders on Facebook. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. All right, let's grab Eric. 
Appreciate you, Eric. He says, over A-Rod, my only hope is Drew gets a fair shake at this thing. Old school defensive guys love quarterbacks that need a cutoff and settle for field goals. I'm not sure what he means by that last line, Zach. I need my in, my syntax interpreter. I think the point he's trying to make is old school defensive minded coaches like Vic Fangio want the safer quarterback who's not going to turn the ball over, ground and pound it, settle for field goals and and hope your defense can win the game. And that sounds like Teddy Bridgewater, but to Fangio's credit, he might want who he wants, but it's going to be an open competition. And right now we think it's lock shop to lose regardless. All right, John, since we are sitting here at 49 minutes, I'm going to take a quick peek on the back end and just see if we missed anybody because the stream just jumped. That's exactly where I'm at, Sean B. So let me just double check here. We got Chris Kane. We got Eric, Andrew. Okay, yeah, we're we're good to go. Uh, Sean B., welcome and thank you, my, my friend. Make sure you connect on Twitter. He says, I'm just spreading some love. Have a great night, guys. Hey, right thank back you, at Sean. you. Appreciate you. Uh, the queen, the queen in the queen. house. What's up, Christy? Good to see you. Hope you're having a great Sunday night. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, Tyler Randall in the hizzy. Tyler, without going down too far of a road, my apologies for getting your extremely um, unfortunate loss confused with someone else in our community's unfortunate loss. But nevertheless, thank you for uh, clarifying that for me privately and uh, hope you're doing okay. He says, send in some love. I'll catch up after work. MHH for life. And thanks for all you do. Appreciate you, dog. And by the way, guys, let us know how the abs are doing. We want to know. And thank you, Tyler, for what you do and all your support. We do appreciate it. And geez, Kayla. We got, I think we got this one from Michaela, right? It's just, it's shocking though, just to see it, just to see that level where it's not, you know, an act it's, it's legitimately, that's our reaction and we're blown away. So thank you. Michaela. Oh no, this is a second one. This is a second one. Wow. Stunning. Put her, put her back on real quick, John. I should, I should always trust the beast. He knows what's up. Michaela. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. It means the world to us. She says, shout out to the priest and beast showing, uh, just showing some love. And we're feeling that love Michaela. So hopefully you feel it too. Um, but thank you so much, my friend. And Michaela said, I believe in the chat, it's her daily highlight, this podcast. And we so appreciate that. But it's because of you, Michaela, and our supporters out there that enable us to keep growing the show and doing more things and introducing new products. And we seriously appreciate and are so grateful for all your support. Thank you. Most definitely. Um, oh, we got the queen. The queen jumping in. Top roping it, as she is wont to do. You know, it's funny, Zach, when I first got into this business, um, my first paid gig as a, as a writer online, as you know, digital sports media, I published an article and I used the phrase as he is want to do. And if you're going to use that, it's not W-A-N-T, it's W-O-N-T. It's actually, you know, you go, wait a minute. That's the only time you would ever use the word W-O-N-T, not won't, want. I had an editor at this particular publication I was at at the time, <clears throat> fan sided, jump in and fix my article thinking that they were smarter than the author. And they ended up dumbing down the article and making the writer hmm. look dumb. So then I went back in and fixed it. Sounds about right. Uh, Dave, what's up, dude? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, it has been a while. Hmm. He says, let's go, Broncos. How are your new digs? For those of you who can remember Callie Dave, he recently packed up last year. Retired, packed up, moved his family to the East Coast. Hope your new digs. I've been trying to stay in touch with what you got going on uh, on Facebook. He says, I'm finally settled into the new house. That's great to hear, buddy. And Chad, you know, another word is exercise. Exercise the demons. It's not exercise like you think it is. It's E-X-O-R. So, mm-hmm. it's, you know, weird. Little weird things that, like that when you deal in words like we do, you know, when you're a wordsmith and you got to mind your P's and Q's. You know, there are going to be typos here and there. It happens. They slip through sometimes. But you got to know English. You got to know your grammar. You got to know phraseology and what's proper and what's not. Nothing gets my goat worse. And thankfully, MHH, you know, we're, it's, I'm, you know, you and I, we're where the buck stops. No one jumps in and edits something right. beyond you and I. But uh, nothing in those in my former days got my goat more than an editor jumping in and fixing th- something they thought was wrong. That was right. Sounds like our last employer, but anyway. Most deaf, most deaf. <laughs> um, okay. Dale, Dale again. Love you, Dale. He says, what's your thought on the defensive line depth? 
I know losing the Shelby Harris, Darrell Casey, Mike Purcell trio hurt the defense. Um, I'm hoping injuries are not an issue this year like last year. That's the key. There's two keys to this year's D-line doing well. One, Draymond. Draymond has to pop. Draymond has to turn the corner as a presumptive, understood, penciled-in starter. And while I think that the odds are good that he does that, we know even if he doesn't fully turn the corner, he's going to do some damage in pass rush situations. It's all about, for him, really being a good run defender and balancing that out. Shelby had to figure that out himself, too. He had to develop and hone those skills as well. The other thing, Zach, as Dale alludes to, health. If this D-line stays away from the injury bug, it can be very, very good. I'm going to add two more real quick. It's Shelby Harris living up to that contract. You know, I was so happy he got paid, but he's getting paid a, a pretty pricey salary, and he has to earn that money. And also, they need a young player to step up as a the top reserve, whether it's Ajim, whether it's Deshaun Williams. They need that next to Marcus Walker, the next man up, and even better than he was. So that's a couple other uh, keys to victory for the Broncos' defensive line in 2021. Um, okay, real quick, John, I'm grabbing Thelma. Didn't Aaron Rodgers have something to do with Mike McCarthy leaving? Yeah, word on the street. Yeah, they uh, they made some magic together for a long time. And I don't think Aaron Rodgers becomes the player he became post-Farve, if not for Mike McCarthy's you know tutelage. But at a certain point, they kind of diverged, and Mike McCarthy's scheme got stale. And – he ended up being the head coach of the offense, Zach, instead of the head coach of the whole team and other parts of the, the roster suffered and ultimately left. I don't know that Rogers, Zach, actively campaigned to get McCarthy out of Green Bay, but I've heard rumors like that. They definitely butted heads, and it's not anything that's totally cataclysmic in terms of their relationship. I believe they're they're on speaking terms at least, but that might have been a problem that wasn't a McCarthy problem because last year in Dallas there was no none of these rumblings. They had a down year last year. None of the rumblings about McCarthy that Rodgers suggested. So, again, this is who he is. This is who he's proven to be. This is a guy who wouldn't talk to his own family for years. So it's I think it's an Aaron thing, not a Green Bay thing. Bearded Bronco, hey, persistence is key, my dog. Persistence is key. He says, I'm going to continue to beat this message until someone sees it. How many quarterbacks who have had a different OC for each of their six years from college to the NFL have had success? Hey, man, that's a good point. I don't have the answer for you, but you do a good job to illustrate that probably not many who have succeeded can say the same. That's been – I mean, it's just another – obstacle that Drew Locke has had to overcome year after year that gets swept under the rug and not addressed or really factored into the whole conversation, Zach. How many to act, actually answer this question, I don't know, without doing research on it, but that's why this year it's another reason why we are optimistic this is going to be the year Drew really takes a authoritative step forward. He might not pop and be, you know, Lamar circa 2019 or Mahomes 2018 or Allen 2020, but I think he's going to take a step forward and silence a lot of the doubters, and this is a big reason why he's getting scheme continuity. And I think success is all relative as well. I mean, you can argue that maybe he, he stunted as an NFL quarterback. I don't personally believe that. You can argue that maybe he'll never reach his ceiling. But I still think you take Drew Locke right this second and you put him in a system with Kyle Shanahan, he's a night and day different quarterback. Coaching matters so much. And I hope for Locke's sake that Pat Shermer gets it together in a make or break season. Three more, and then we are got to go. Counting the queen, jumping in. Thank you for the support, Christy. Love you. Hope all is well in your neck of the woods. And congrats on maybe getting a little rest time, you know, not driving around, softball practice, probably three nights a week, if not more, for the age your your kids are. Kick back, enjoy the summertime, she says. Getting closer to football. That's right. Hey, they're out there. So long as the Broncos are in the building, Zach, we got something to talk about and celebrate. I was actually going to throw some congrats Christie's way. She put it on Twitter, so don't feel, you know, I don't want to put your business on blast, but her daughter won her softball tournament, so I want to give her a little credit. We're very happy for you, Christy, and thank you so much for all that you do. Very cool. Very cool. Congrats. Tell her uh, props from the football priest. That's killer. That's great. Um, here's Jonathan. What's up, dude? Appreciate you. He goes, is there any concern with bulls? By the way, Jonathan, it's been a minute since I've seen you in the chat. Welcome back, bro, and thank you for the support. 
Is there any concern with Garrett Bowles and crowds returning to the stadium? I've noticed some athletes perform better with less people live in person. That's actually an interesting question. Is there any concern not front of brain? I don't really, I'm, uh, I'm not worried about that, but it is something to kind of monitor because maybe that did have something to do <clears throat> at least indirectly with him turning the corners act. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to think that he became one of the NFL's highest paid tackles because there was no crowd noise last year. I'd like to think it's because he genuinely turned a corner and Mike Munchak finally uh, enabled that light bulb to flick off in his mind. I'm going to maintain positivity about Garrett Bowles. BNS, if you're listening out there, I maintain positivity about Garrett Bowles and I uh, hopefully he will continue to be the tackle that he played at last year and doesn't automatically revert to the tackle that we saw the years prior because stadiums were full again. John makes a point. Probably Alex Smith is the best Q that overcame OC after OC after OC after OC. But even he had the same guy in college the whole time he was in college. So interesting. Thanks, John. Uh, Kane, again. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. He says, I follow UT football, Texas. And Caden Stearns, for those of you guys, Caden Stearns was the first safety the Broncos drafted a month ago is going to be like Justin Simmons when he was playing special teams, making plays all over the place. He has a very high ceiling, and it could be a boon drafting him and Johnson back-to-back. Yeah, I mean, look, we know Simmons is here for the long haul, but they need someone to succeed Kareem Jackson. Kareem's teeth are so long, you know, they're sticking out of his mouth even if he's not smiling. He's old. He's 33. Is he entering it? Zach, is he – 30, age 33 season or age 34? Either way, he's old. Broncos cut him, re-signed him at a discount. This is it for Kareem. They need someone to not only groom, but to kind of prove this year, hey, I've got you. Even if it's you know in rough form, show and flash, I can succeed Kareem Jackson. And then even if you check that box, Zach, how often do the Broncos run big nickel where you got three safeties on right. the field? So you need that right. third safety almost as badly as you need a number two. Yeah, that third, that, it might as well be another starter on the field, that third safety. And here's what I'll say about the safeties. And, Kane, you make a great point, and thank you for your contribution. I think Stearns has the higher floor, but I think Jamar Johnson has the higher ceiling. And them together, that's the future at safety for the Broncos. I mean, you're talking about having Simmons out there with Jamar and also Stearns. That's a pretty good trio and a young trio at that to build around in that secondary. So I'm excited about all of them. I just think Jamar Johnson's playmaking ability, once he gets his legs under him, is going to pop this season. All right, guys. We are about out of time. Before we dip on out, though, there's one last thing I want to draw your attention to. We are we think it's pretty solid. We think it's, it's pretty cool. But we want you guys – man, this thing just doesn't want to work with me. So let me – this is probably the best I'm going to be able to get it. Um, and because I've blown it up, it's a little bit grainy. So, oh, John's got it. John's got it ready to go. Well, that's the design, but is it on the T-shirt? I'm going to show it on the T-shirt. But here's what I'll do. I'll flash the T-shirt, and then I'm going to pull that up because it's a better view of it, John. Um, but, guys, we got a brand-new T-shirt design. Go to huddleuppod.com. You'll find it. Football priests, all right? Our cartooned visages for you. Hashtag football priests, mile high huddle. Check it out. We got other designs coming down the pike that are going to be similar to this and not just a logo, but kind of cool, different fun things to, you know, I guess, celebrate the community, celebrate the show, celebrate MHH. Go get yourself a hashtag football priest t-shirt. This is our brand new one. My mug, Zach's mug, check it out. And here's a, here's probably Zach. Well, no, I think that was good enough, right? We showed him or here, here's John pulled it up for us. Another look. All right. At the design itself. So check that out when you guys get some time, but that said gang, and I put the link in the chat here. I'll put it in again. Go get one of these guys. Support the cause. Appreciate you. Um, you know, you take care of your friends, right? It's like uh, Brandon Perna. I went and bought this off his merch store because I like to support my friends, right? We appreciate that se- that same um, sentiment. So love you guys. Zach, we're kicking off a new week. The Broncos are going to be back on the grass all week long. Tomorrow we're going to get some player and coach availability after practice. So Got to be lots to discuss all week long. We hope to see everybody in the house every single day. Tomorrow we come back, uh, 6 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you then. I'll see everyone else then. Send us off, bro. 
Yes, sir. Hope you have a great end to your Sunday, John, as well. Everyone out there, thank you for another great week, and we're excited. Last batch of OTAs this week. We have mandatory minicamp coming up, and then training camp next month, late July. Football is slowly but surely coming back, and we're so excited to get into the Broncos season. That being said, though, guys, be sure to follow the Huddle Up Pod on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod. You can follow the Mothership account at Mile High Huddle for all your news, analysis, opinions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can follow Chad on Twitter at Chad and Jensen. You can follow myself at Kelberman NFL. You can follow the Beast at John K M H H. If you can, guys, be sure to hit up the merch store at HuddleUpPod.com and get your swag. Get the shirt, guys. I promise you, be a cool kid. Only the cool kid get the football pre-shirt. Uh, we're getting it. We're going to debut it soon. I'm going to be rocking it, so be like us. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle. Become a supporter. Big blue button. KK took a day off today. Coming back next Sunday. I promise you don't want to miss it. If you can't do that, though, totally get it. Once again, be sure to subscribe, like, and share on YouTube. Helps us grow monumentally. We will see you guys, though, tomorrow night. Fresh week of podcasting. 6 o'clock Mountain. 8 o'clock Eastern. Be there. Take care. And as always... Go Broncos. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.